All right, so there's a little bit of snow on the ground, not too much. Right now, I'm going to get my coffee. And I think the good thing is that the days are starting to get a little bit longer because I think it was 4.30 the other day. And, uh, it was 4.30 the other day and it wasn't dark. It was starting to get dark, so by 4.30, usually it's dark. Which means I'll be able to do more things. All right, so I got my coffee. I got my sandwich. I'm all ready for period two of the Bruins. They're facing uh, the Blackhawks, which I don't know if anybody knew, but um, they were in the Stanley Cup last year together. And obviously, I wanted the Bruins to win, and the Blackhawks won. So it's kind of like what it was like their first big meeting uh, since then. So it's going to be interesting to kind of see like where things play out. What I'm noticing is the Bruins are definitely playing a lot more aggressive than like if they were just playing a normal team. That's because Chicago is really aggressive in their play. A lot of the the mid to west coast teams are really aggressive when they play. The, the east coast are more about um, I say just like strategic uh, placements and stuff like that, and like making sure the puck just stays out of the zone, but. Uh, like the West Coast players and the like Mid Coast players and all that, they're they're just so aggressive. But the score is one one, so I guess we'll see where it goes. And wait, there's ice. Definitely not enough to skate on, but there is ice. Maybe sometime I can finally go out and skate. I know Mark's been begging me too. All right, so it's the first commercial break of the second period, and it's two two now. It was 2-1, but now it's 2-2. Two, two. Beautiful. Beautiful out. Can't wait for spring, though. So, the Bruins lost. They lost in a shootout. They went into OT, like a five-minute OT, and then it went to shootout, and then they lost. Oh, well, next time. I believe next time they play the Hawks, they're at home, so should give them a little bit more of an advantage and right now I'm gonna head over to the town forest and take a little bit of a walk or something and then I'll see what's up from there I think I'm probably might just go to honeydew for a little bit I'm not sure yet so I made it out here and it looks pretty nice it's a little tiny dusting of snow kind of like a not really a sunny day the sun's still way back there but really nice. The other thing is I wish it was a little bit longer, like the forest went a little bit longer and everything. It's kind of short. I'd say probably less than, probably less than a mile probably, like the loop around and everything. It's a nice little nature walk though. See I love that, I think that's so pretty. The way that the snow just kind of accents the the uh, branches on the, these the baby trees. It's so nice. You know, when we were younger, we used to make movies in here, like horror movies and everything. I don't know. Maybe sometime I'll post links to it. Kind of embarrassing, but yeah, we used to come here all the time, make movies, just hang out. So it was Norton 300, which was Norton's 300th birthday in 2011. Which means that technically, Norton has been a town for more than this country's been a country. Because the country was founded in, what, 1776? Or officially a country in 1776, and which would mean Norton was founded in uh, 1711, making it one of the oldest uh, towns 
pretty much in the US. Massachusetts, there are definitely towns that have been uh, settled and everything earlier, but this is definitely one of the most earliest. It's kind of interesting to think about all the history that's taking place in these woods. This is actually a cemetery that's right next to the town forest. I'm going to show you guys kind of like what I mean about how old Norton is. There's one from 1839. Gotta try to keep out the names for uh, privacy reasons. There's one from 1859. So, the most of these ones seem like they're from the 1800s, which is still pretty old. But the one by my house, I'll go there sometime. They're all around from the 17 and 1600s. And here's a sign for the graveyard, or the uh, cemetery. It's a Timothy Plain burial ground, established in 1742. It just kind of gives you a little background history. I don't know, maybe I, I was kind of thinking of maybe I should do kind of like a historical Massachusetts sort of thing. Because um, I really, really, really enjoy history. And I'd love to learn like the history of these areas. Like, I think I was saying in one of the, the vlogs earlier, it was like, uh, what was it? Taunton. It was called the Silver City. It was called the Silver City because they used to manufacture a bunch of silver products there, such as like, uh, you know, the silver teaspoons, the silver plates. And it used to be a really big industry back then. Hey! Uh, so that was a nice little trip to Honeydew. I just kind of sat around, listened to music a little bit. God, you guys can probably hardly even see me. Yeah, I just sat around at uh, Honeydew for a little bit and listened to my music. And now, nice dusking sky in Massachusetts. I wish it wasn't the clouds and wish it was a little bit more lighter out. It's only like, what, 5, 5.22? So it's still technically light out at 5.22. I mean, it's kind of dark, but because it was really nice just to like, that's what I always look forward to is I always look forward to um, Sundays when I don't work and I can just like go to Honeydew and just chill out for a bit. It kind of gets my mind off of things. It kind of just gives me a place to uh, go. So now I'm just gonna head back home. I think I'm gonna, might play some Liberation tonight, Assassin's Creed Liberation, or I might play some, uh, what's that other game called? Heavy Rain, because I, I got Heavy Rain when I was under the influence the other night. Anyways, so yeah, I'm heading home right now, and I'll see what I'm going to do from there.